It's now time to turn our attention to the grain markets. Earlier this week, we were joined by Heather Ramsey with the ARC Group to go over the latest happenings in the markets. Here's our conversation. Well, there's a lot of focus right now. South America, Russia, uh, China, even influences here in the United States, we were talking. High level the last couple of weeks and even this week, <laughs> what have we seen in terms of the grain complexes? Yeah, the very high level piece of this is that we are getting some buying back from China in our corn, in our sorghum complex, so that's a positive. Um, we have continued to see massive production deterioration out of South America, specifically Argentina. Um, the question is uh, more along the lines of how many acres are being abandoned now? It's not do we have crop losses. We There definitely are crop losses. It's what is not even going to make it all the way through to harvest? That is the big question. You look at recently here in the last week, we had a lot of discussion around um, how long will the Russian uh, grain corridor get extended? A lot of debate right now on whether the agreement was another 60 days or 120 days. Um, but, you know, Russia kind of wants some things that not real sure if the other side of the equation is willing to support some changes um, to that export corridor and the requirements. So that is still up in the air on the table. Um, there has been an overall decline in uh, soybean complex, uh, specifically to soybean meal. That's been weighing on the soybean market. I think a lot of times we forget that that back end complex is just as important to overall raw grain demand on soybeans. So that's kind of been weighing on things. And then in the last, uh, over the last weekend, obviously we have some developments in more of our macro side of the equation here in the U.S. where we have some failing of large U.S. banks. What does that mean? What's the government going to do for, uh, for those banks? How is that affecting the U.S. dollar? Because we all know that U.S. dollar and grains become very tightly interwoven, especially when we start talking about exports, export demand. You know, where does everyone else's buying power, how, how strong does that become in the U.S.? So that's kind of the um, piece of the equation that we don't quite know yet, how that's gonna shake out. Um, but that is another um, not so supportive right now piece of information, depending on how long it hangs around, could be if it turns into demand down the road. So kind of some high level, high level tidbits yeah. right now for the market. I want to dive into that a little bit, the Silicon Valley Bank failing. That's going to be in a lot of people's minds recently. What yeah. do you expect to see? What should people be focusing on, if anything? What I will say is from a grain marketing standpoint, from a risk management standpoint, I think these are one of those headlines that's totally out of our control. There's nothing that I can do today to change that outcome. But what I can do is look at the farm and say, you know, are we well positioned? Um, for us, the answer is yes, because we've started to put in all of our you know, disciplinary um, marketing tools that we use every year, year in and year out, to kind of get the farm structured in a spot that we are less risk, um, we take on less risk in the farm, I guess you'd say. So for me, I'm not necessarily looking at what's going on with this Silicon Valley Bank. I'm more so concerned about keeping the Fed's interest rate hikes kind of in mind from a back end side of the farm or maybe the front end, whichever you want to say, but from a financial impact to the farm, this interest rate hike and the trajectory we're on is still going to be more important to the business at the end of the day. So we're having a lot of conversations, getting clients asking us, what do you think about interest rates? Well, I can think what I want to think. What the Fed is going to do ultimately will affect our bottom dollar more than anything we can try to outguess with this one situation. And so we're having more um, conversations prompting guys to really be evaluating, you know, where are your interest rates? How much are you borrowing? You know, have that co quality conversation with your banker. Because from a marketing standpoint, we need to continue to execute and stay disciplined through this seasonal price opportunity we have, you know, now through the end of June. Um, we need to be comfortable and feel comfortable continuing to take action in that risk management strategy. You talk a little bit about seasonality. Of course, one thing we always look at this time of year is mm -hmm. South America. Dive into that a little bit more. What are we seeing? Yeah, so the bulls really love that South American headline. Um, I think initially the whole market world kind of thought, oh, well, whatever the losses are in South America, in Argentina specifically, Brazil's going to outweigh that. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, there are two key problems with that that the bulls would like to see really take some action. One of those being that Argentina's corn crop is really important to global corn supply. Um, they're going to have a very significant loss. Um, the numbers I've seen look like somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% reduction in their crop size. That is huge mm -hmm. um, and devastating for that farm economy. 
Um, there's a concern then, you know, how much of that negatively impacts those farmers where then we do see some loss in their farm, either production size capabilities going forward or, you know, temporary setbacks in growth. So that's kind of problem number one. Problem number two is when you look at who supplies beans around the globe that you're actually going to sit on from a storage and a surplus management standpoint, right? So if someone wanted, say a large country, wanted to fill their soybean coffers, you know, and have good quality beans that then nine months to a year down the road, they could process later, they're typically buying those soybeans from Argentina or the US. So then it becomes a question of, well, if Argentina doesn't have those soybeans, where do we get them from? Do we have to have them? Because US soybeans are higher priced right now. So do we have to have them? Or can we get by just buying processed products for as long as we possibly can? So there's a big debate there on what that impact will be to the, both the US corn and soybean um, demand picture, as well as just from a global you know, sense of security. You know, where does all that surplus come from? So Argentina is a big one. I didn't touch on this earlier, but Ukraine corn also really big ticket item right now um, for trying to figure out how, how much legs is under this, this bull conversation when we're getting so much downward pressure from the outside macro and financial markets right now. Mm -hmm. Heather, as we sit here on Tuesday and have this conversation, what are some important things those producers should be focused on ultimately? You know, ultimately right now, I think the best question for a producer to ask themselves is, where am I sitting at from a downside risk standpoint, right, on this 23 crop? And do I feel comfortable sitting there? Can I sleep at night without any worries? Um, there are some that would answer that, yeah, totally. I've got things working, I've got floors on, I've got products pricing. And I'm sure there are others out there that are kind of thinking, I haven't done anything. <laughs> so that answering yes or no to that question, I think really gives you the idea of where you need to go and what you need to work on. You know, right now is year over year, still one of the best seasonal forward price windows we can look at. And so I really encourage everybody to kind of take advantage of this window, get some marketing tools in your pocket that you can work with, you know, whether it's looking at options or futures or averaging products, whatever it may be, look at those and get them set up to work for you, not against, you gotta be very <laughs> cautious about what you're doing, but get them set up to make, make yourself less susceptible to downside risk at this point in time, because it does feel like that is um, a pretty large um, risk potential at this point in time.